Hello children, welcome to BKS Physics Clinic. This is the simplest way to gain a confidence in physics by attending these lectures which I am giving one after the other. And today lecture wise you are coming in fact to the end of the second last chapter which is nucleus. And uh, today's topic will be very interesting. It is binding energy and binding energy is the core of the stability of matter that we talk about all the time. Binding energy we will be seeing and also we will be seeing briefly what is nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. So, we begin with what is binding energy, let us understand it. You know the theory of creation of this universe, we have an existing and a valid theory is called Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory says that the world began with a giant explosion, right? And when the world began, it was only filled with what? Energy. And now slowly the energy got sucked into what? Certain space and began changing into mass. Today there is new research going on if you uh, if you're following it about God's particle it's in fact all about this the particle which are binding energy with mass. Okay? So, let us come back to the core topic. We are talking about nuclear binding energy and I said that we have a theory which says that the universe began with a big bang or a big explosion and after explosion it was only with filled with what? Energy. Now, this energy, in fact, according to our conventional concept, we always believe that energy and mass these are independent uh, uh, phenomena actually, these are independent things. But then Einstein said that in fact energy and mass both are equivalent. Every mass has its energy equivalent, meaning less than some by the dual nature of radiations, light is made up of that is uh, in fact energy and light is made up of photons and all these photons are massless. Now imagine a situation in which we bring all these photons together when you compress them into a very small space. So, when you compress them into a very small space, in fact what happens they turn into mass. Okay? This is what you are going to talk about the mass energy equivalent. Mass and energy they are not independent in fact, they coexist and they are interconvertible. Now Einstein said that if we consider the mass m, then its energy equivalent will exist as e is equal to m c square. And this is famous mass energy equation that we call mass energy equivalent, mass energy equivalent e is equal to m into c square where c is what? Speed of light. That means, mass can be converted into energy using which equation is equal to m into c square. Suppose, I want to calculate equivalent of 1 kilogram of mass, energy equivalent of 1 kilogram of mass, then E will be equal to 1 into speed of light 3 into 10 power 18 square e will be 9 into 10 power 16 joule. So, energy equivalent of 1 kilogram of mass will be 9 into 10 power 16 joule. Okay? Now, this concept of mass energy equivalent is central to understanding what exactly is binding energy. So, let us go back to this. After creation of the universe, the world was filled with energy and particles. So, now these particles were separated. One suppose one particle is here, one particle is here, one particle is here and one particle is here. And these particles were in extremely high energy state. Now, imagine how a nucleus was formed. These particles actually had to be sucked into a very small region. Suppose I suck one proton okay, and uh, I put it inside a nucleus, one proton and then the electron around it. So, it becomes what? It becomes hydrogenator. If I bring in one proton and I write here one proton and one neutron, it becomes, so one positive charge here, it becomes deuterium. This is protium, this is deuterium. And on the other hand, if I bring one 
proton and two neutrons one proton and two neutrons like this means one positive charge and you put inside the nucleus it becomes tritium 1h3 so see the in fact see the situations here as they are changing in case of hydrogen atom i am bringing one proton packing to the nucleus so the repulsion is minimum the work done is also to be minimum you can imagine that this ball which is running away from you and you want to catch it and bring it near you what will you do you will be doing work in order to bring it and you know place in a designated place similarly here one proton and one neutron has to be sucked into the nucleus again large amount of work has to be done from bringing them closer because you have seen the nature of the graph when the distance will decrease then the force will tend to become repulsive right and the force you maximum at an equilibrium distance which is about 0.80 for me right so when you are packing them in nucleus actually when they come very close they will be repulsive so either way energy has to be spent in order to hold them inside the nucleus same thing out here one proton and two neutron i'm packing the nucleus and the process i have to do work with the particles were separated when the universe was created energy and then particles it is all filled with particle the particles have to be brought in closed and packed into the tiny space that we call nucleus so the question is from where is this energy coming in fact the energy is coming from this equation when these particles were separated and they brought and accommodated into these nuclei then the nature took care of the energy which are required for bringing them closer and packing into the nucleus what happens that during the process of packing them into the nucleus a small part of their mass was converted into energy using which equation this equation is equal to mc square and then this energy is constantly being used to continue to hold them inside the nucleus now suppose when these particles are brought from their independent locations and packed into the nucleus and i did the work w now this work w was not done by me actually but it's in an analogous situation in which i'm bringing and packing the mixer the nucleus but the nature did the job of packing the mixer the nucleus they drove themselves into this what tiny space to gain stability and form the nuclei so for this process energy had to be spent and how this energy was spent nature took care of this small portion of their masses got converted into energy and in fact that's called what mass defect mass defect the nucleus is occupied by protons and neutrons So, if I ask what is mass of the nucleus, what will you do? Will you add up masses of all the protons and all the neutrons, right? So, if you add up all the masses, and then you weigh the nucleus, of course, you cannot weigh in a weighing machine. If you weigh the nucleus, you'll find that the nucleus is slightly lighter than some of the masses of the components. Let's understand like this. Suppose I have a basket here, and I have five red balls and some four four uh, yellow balls here. And if I ask you, what is the mass of this basket then what will you say it will be five red balls plus four yellow balls suppose combined together their mass should be 90 g suppose but do you use the finest weighing machine in the world and you found that their mass came to be around 89.99 g so question arises what happens to the difference of the mass which is 0.01 gram this is actually mass defect now let's see what the situation suppose these were nucleons suppose i have five protons and four neutrons or five neutrons and four neutrons are packed into the nucleus then what will i find that the actual mass of the nucleus is less than the masses of the nucleons and what is this mass called this is what you call is mass defect now where is this mass going this mass actually has been converted into energy which is required for holding the nucleons together 
and this conversion took place according to which relation e is equal to mc square clear so once you have understood all these things then you will be seeing what is mass defect what is mass energy equivalent and then we will define what is binding energy so children now when these nine nucleons came to form a nucleus how much mass defect took place suppose 0.1 gram so what is the equivalent of energy that was spent 0 0.01 into c square of course i'll change this into kilogram 10 to the power minus 3 suppose for data sake this much energy was spent now if i want to break the nucleus apart then how much energy i need to supply if i want to break up the nucleus how much energy i need to supply in fact the energy supplied by me will be exactly the same as the energy as the energy was spent in packing them inside the nucleus and this is what we call is binding energy okay so we'll be defining all these key terms some sure you have this discussion that during formation of the nucleus a small part of mass of the nucleus is converted into energy and that is called what mass defect okay so children we'll understand what is mass equivalence mass and the equivalence binding energy binding energy we have mass energy equivalence e is equal to mc square where m is mass and c is speed of light clear so according to mass energy equivalence mass can be converted into energy according to actually this is the equation e is equal to m into c square we can understand an analogy in which you imagine a mass m is being accelerated at the speed of light then it become something equivalent to twice the kinetic energy which is half mv square but right now you have to remember that mass can be converted into energy okay is in this equation now we have mass defect so mass defect is difference between so here we have mass defect difference between the masses of nucleons and actual atomic mass is called mass defect now children suppose you have a nucleus here and this nucleus has got atomic number z atomic number is z and mass number is a that means there will be z protons and how many neutrons e minus z neutrons yes then for mass defect our equation will be z into mass of each proton plus e minus z into mass of each neutron minus atomic mass and this atomic mass will be given to you so you can very well use this equation z into mass of proton e minus z into m n minus atomic mass clear you can also write uh, like this z into mass of proton plus e minus z into mass of neutron minus a so this will be mass defect and children generally this mass defect will be calculated in terms of atomic mass unit so what will be unit of this this will be atomic mass unit either you can write amu or you can simply write u clear so we understood what is mass defect we also understood what is mass and g equivalence now once we understand this we'll understand what is binding energy what is binding energy binding energy is what like i said inside the nucleus we have to pack these nucleons 
न्यूक्लियंस ऑफ पैक्ड इन साइट सम ऑफ दीज न्यूक्लियंस विल प्रोटॉन्स एंड सम ऑफ दीज न्यूक्लियंस विल बी न्यूट्रॉन्स क्लियर सो एज दीज न्यूक्लियंस ऑफ पैक्ड इन साइड न्यूक्लियस they are bound by nuclear forces and you know the nuclear forces till today we don't understand fully what equation governs them but we know that these are strongest forces in nature and they are extremely short range forces they act over a distance of maximum about 4 fermi and the maximum at about 0.8 fermi if they are compressed the nucleons are compressed for the suppose this is 0.8 fermi the force is maximum once again we discuss the graph Here the force is maximum. If you decrease the distance this side, then the force are becoming repulsive. You can see they will be repulsive. And if you increase, then also the force will decrease. There will be no repulsion. Of course, attraction will be there, but above here there will be. So force is maximum only at one point eight fermi. If you increase the distance, then the force will decrease. So the nucleons will have to be pulled inside. When you bring them closer than point in Fermi, there will be repulsion. Again, they have to be pushed inside. So both ways work has to be done. So we formed a nucleus, and now if I tell you that okay, now separate these nuclei completely from each other, then what will you have to do? You have to break the nucleus. So breaking the nucleus, how much work you have to do? You have to do exactly the same amount of work. Which was done for bringing them closer into the nucleus and what packing them. And again, from where this energy came? This energy came from mass defect. During formation of the nucleus, a small part of the mass was converted into energy, and that is utilized in the process of holding them inside the nucleus. Clear? So, what is binding energy? Binding energy is the amount of energy which is required. For breaking a nucleus completely and separating the nucleons by infinite distance between them, when I'm saying infinite, it does not mean you have to take them from here to the moon. No, not necessary. They are extremely tiny. Displacing them by a few angstrom is also like infinite for them on that scale, if you see. By infinity, we mean that they will be free from the mutual interaction. I mean, they will not be experience uh, applying a force on each other. Okay. So binding energy is the amount of work done required. Let's write it down. The amount of binding energy V E. So binding energy is the amount of work done required to break a nucleus completely, so that nucleons are separated by infinite distance between them. Okay. So this is the nuclear binding energy. I need to bear in mind. Now the important thing which comes in exam also. Is how to calculate nuclear binding energy. Calculation of nuclear binding energy. I'll be writing the steps. I'll be seeing one example also of this. Now, children, we'll be seeing steps as to how we calculate binding energy. But before that, there are certain terms. Once again, we'll uh, recall mass defect. Delta m is equal to z into mass of proton plus e minus z into mass of neutron minus atomic mass, and all these will be calculated in m. Clear? Then we have another term also called packing fraction. Packing fraction. We denote it by p. Mass defect per nucleon is called packing fraction. Mass defect per nucleon per nucleon is called packing fraction. So P will be equal to children mass defect divided by Mass number. So mass defect is m delta m. Mass number is here. So this is the definition of packing fraction. Clear? So this also you have to know. So if they ask you what is mass defect, average mass defect, a mass defect per nucleon. So calculate mass defect and then divide by the mass number. 
will be converted in what system, what unit? Atomic mass unit AMU. Clear? Now once you understand the children, we will understand how we calculate binding energy. Steps for calculating steps for calculating binding energy. Okay. Actually, binding energy is calculated by using equation. Uh, mass energy equivalence. Before you see the steps, here is the question. Calculate energy equivalent of of 1 amu. Suppose I want to know if one atomic mass unit of energy is uh, one atomic mass unit of mass is converted to energy, how much energy will be released? Then I will be using which equation? E is equal to m into c square. Now how much is mass? Mass is 1 amu and 1 amu is how much? 1.66 into 10 power 27 kilograms. Yes, so if I want to calculate equivalent of 1 amu of mass defect, I will be taking m is equal to 1.6 in 10 minus 27. So let us put it here. It will be 1.66 10 to minus 27 into speed applied in 3 into 10 power 8 square. Clear? So this will be 1.66 into 9 into 10 to the power minus 27 into 10 to the power 16. If we solve it and this will be in joule. But this is very small energy in joule. So what I will do is in fact if we simplify it is coming to be 1.66 into 10 to the power in uh, 1.6 to 9 into 10 to the power minus 11 joule. I will convert into million electron volt and uh, 1 million electron volt you know is 1.6 into 10 minus 13 joule. So, what I will do is I will divide it by 1.66 into 9 into 10 power minus 11, 1.6 into 10 power minus 13. And if you solve it, it comes to 931.50 million electron volt MeV. So, it is very important for you to know that if mass is one, uh, one atomic mass in it, then the energy equivalent will be 931.50 million electron volt. Okay? So, here you get a direct formula that one AMU of mass defect will be equivalent to 931.50 million electron volt. Now, this is a very in interesting result that we got and this result will be used by, by us directly in calculating the nuclear binding energy. 1 atomic mass unit is equivalent to 931.50 million tron volt. Okay? So, every time I have to do a sum, I will not calculate mass defect in kilogram, I will convert into, I will calculate into AMU, mass defect will be calculated in AMU and I will directly multiply with 931.50 and that will give me the energy equivalent in million tron volts. So, here are the steps. Steps for calculating binding energy are step calculate mass defect in AMU, calculate mass defect in AMU. So, what formula will use? Delta M is equal to Z into mass of proton plus E minus Z into mass of neutron minus atomic mass and this will convert in terms of atomic mass unit u you can write u or you can write amu both are basically equivalent and step 2 is calculate binding energy using formula what formula i'll be using binding energy is equal to delta m into 931.50 and this will come in million and ton volt so this is the ultimate formula that i'll be using Step 1 is I will calculate how much is the mass defect. Okay? I will calculate first what? Mass defect. 
and multiplied 9, 31.50 million electron volt that will give me the binding energy and this binding energy will come in what? Million electron volt. Okay. And finally, one more term that we use average binding energy. Average binding energy. We also call it binding energy per nucleon is equal to binding energy divided by mass number. So, binding energy by A. So, this will be average binding energy per nucleon. Okay. So, write down this and then we will be beginning with we will uh, see one sum also on binding energy calculation. Okay. Here we have a problem children calculate binding energy per nucleon of 20 CF40 given mass of calcium is 39.962589 AMU, mass of neutron is this much AMU and proton is 1.007825 AMU right. Now we have to calculate now this kind of questions come in exam you must practice them very seriously it relates to calculation of binding energy first and then calculation of average binding energy. So, children given here we have z is equal to 20 and a is equal to 40. The atomic number is 20 and mass number is 40. So, first thing I am going to do is to calculate what is the mass defect. So, mass defect children is We will be using formula delta m is equal to z into mass of proton plus a minus z into mass of neutron minus atomic mass. If I use this equation, then delta m will be how much? Delta m will be z is 20, mass of proton we have. 1.007825 plus 40 minus 20 into mass of neutron 1.008665 and what is the atomic mass 39 point we have 9.62589 Okay. So, it is 20 into 0, 0, 007825 plus 20 into 1.008665 minus 39.962589173301730 minus 39.962589. Okay. Now, we add these two and we subtract 39, uh, 39962589. Okay. So, let us see what is the 367211 AMA. So, children, this is the value of mass defect. Once you calculate the mass defect, then the next thing you have to calculate is how much the nuclear binding energy. And for nuclear binding energy, you know the shortcut formula that will multiply mass defect in atomic mass unit with 931.50. So, binding energy will be children delta m into 931.50. There is no need for you to do m c square because that formula only we have used and we got this equation. So, this is shortcut formula. Once in a mass defect in atomic mass in the multiply 931.50. So, binding energy will be children, binding energy will be 0.367211 multiply by 931.50. Anyways, how much is coming to be? 341.87 million electron volts. So, this is the total binding energy which is associated with the calcium nucleus 341.87 MeV, but this is not the end because they ask you what is average binding energy. So, children for average binding energy or binding energy per nucleon, binding energy per nucleon 
will be equal to binding energy divided by atomic number. So, it is 341.87 divided by 40 MeV. Calculate this. 8.547 MeV per Newton. So, children, this is how you will be given in numerical. A sum will be given and be told to calculate binding energy or average binding energy. So, you will follow these steps. We will calculate it first. Uh, we will be calculating first what? The mass defect by using the st uh, stabless formula which I gave you. And then you use direct formula, the binding energy will be mass defect into 931.50 and if the question is about finding what is the average binding energy per nucleon then you have to divide the binding energy by mass number. So, we saw this case of calcium you can do for any nuclei try for yourself this is very easy ok. Now I will be saying children average binding energy graph which is again important for you. Uh, but before that, what is significance of binding energy? This is an important topic for you to know. What is significance? What is the use? Significance of binding energy. What is the significance? Now we discussed that binding energy is the minimum amount of energy which we need to supply for breaking a nucleus completely. And if I am saying there are two nuclei, one is A, the other is B. And I am saying that binding energy of A is more than binding energy of B. So, it clearly means that if I want to break A more uh, uh, completely, I mean if I want to break A completely compared to B, I will be supplying more amount of energy. That means, which will be harder to break. If binding energy of A, suppose there are two nuclei and binding energy of A is more than binding energy of B. So, it simply means A will be requiring more energy for breaking means A will be harder to break compared to B. In other words, B will be breaking more easily. So, remember the higher the binding energy the more stable is the nucleus. So, this is the utility or significance that binding energy is used to show the extent of stability of a nucleus. More the binding energy more the stability of the nucleus. So, significance is more the binding energy, more the stability. So, nuclei which are stable, they have greater binding energies. When nuclei which are radioactive, which undergo spontaneous emissions and breakdown subsequently, they have lower binding energy. Okay. So, if the binding energy is low, means binding energy per nucleon is also low. Okay. So, let us say this. Okay, children. Now we will be discussing average binding energy graph. Average binding energy graph. This graph is going to be another interesting topic and also important for exam. Remember, from this chapter, you may get a problem on calculating binding energy or average binding energy, or they may ask you to draw this every binding energy graph. Okay. In this graph, we will be seeing variation of average binding energy with respect to the mass number. So, we will be denoting mass number on the x axis, and then we have average AVG binding energy. Okay. This will be in million electron volt MeV. So, we will mark the scale. We have 50, we have 100, uh, let us take slightly smaller 50, 50. 100, 150, 200 and also we have 
टू फिफ्टी ओके एंड देन एवरेज बाइनिंग एनर्जी विल बी टेकिंग वन एम ई वी टू एम ई वी थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट एंड दिस एट देन आई विल बी टेकिंग एट पॉइंट फाइव And I'll be taking here nine, and this is seven. I'll be taking seven point six. Okay. Here, children, we have shown. This average band energy graph. Let's understand it. This is forty. This is forty. So, like I was saying, you know, it can be fifty. will cat uh, will we are denoting binding energy per nucleon in million ton volts on the y axis and mass number on the x axis let's understand it this graph will be categorically divided into uh, three parts one is up to 40 1 to 40 the other is 40 to 120 and 42 third partly 42 uranium to 38 And then beyond uranium to the four four parts are there. Now the main features are that you can see the smaller nuclei have very low amount of average binding energy. You can see this is deuterium, this is tritium. You can see the graph is mostly smooth, but there are a few peaks. These peaks are occurring. The higher peaks at helium. carbon oxygen and sulfur clear so the graph is mostly smooth and the peaks are occurring at helium which has got average binding energy of just below 7 carbon 14 isotope has got nearly 8 nitrogen has got just above weight uh, oxygen has got just above weight but in their certain what lows also Like you have lithium six has got very low compared to helium. Nitrogen got less than uh, carbon fourteen. Then you got oxygen. Oxygen sixteen has got more compared to oxygen eighteen. So these are highs and lows, but mostly the graph is smooth. The graph becomes interesting once you cross at some uh, mass number forty. If you go beyond this mass number forty, you can see the graph is more or less smooth up to one twenty. Between here to here, the graph is forty to one twenty. The graph is just about eight point five MeV per nucleon. Okay, so up to forty, it is less than eight point five. Forty to one twenty is. Just about 8.5, just above 8.5. Iron 56 is an exception. For iron 56, the average binding energy is highest. That is 56. Uh, that is 8.8 MeV per nucleon. I am not saying here on the graph. It is here, in fact. This is 8.8. So among all the elements that we know today, iron is the most stable element because it has got highest value for. If this binding energy, which is 8.8 million electron volt per nucleon, if you go beyond 120, then the binding energy you can see gradually decreasing. And for uranium 238, the binding energy becomes 7.6 MeV per nucleon out here. It's quite low. And if you go beyond uranium 238, then the binding energy gradually decreases further. 
The reason is mass number has become very high and you are packing nucleons into very smaller region. And as you pack them into very smaller region, then the force will become repulsive again. We have seen this. Force will become repulsive in this region. So the nucleus tries to break down itself. So we'll be writing the main points. First one is average binding energy for smaller nuclei is low. Clear? Number two, for atomic number lying between 1 to 40, average binding energy is less than 8 upon 5 million electron volt per nucleon. Clear? And then third point is Urine binding energy for HE4, C14, O16, and S32 is higher than their than their neighboring elements. So, what does it mean? That these nuclei are more stable compared to their neighboring nuclei. Clear? Then we have, so this is what range we saw, less than 40 is binding energy is less than 8.5 mv per nuclear. Number 4, for mass number lying between 40 to 120, Average binding energy is about 8.5 million electron volt per nuclear. That means it is highest between 40 to 120. Average binding energy is highest between 40 to 120. So, what does it imply? It implies that the nuclei which align between 40 to 120, they are largely what? Very stable nuclei. Now we find here a very interesting thing, this is a peak here you can see and it is the highest that the average binding energy compared to uh, pertaining to iron 56 is the highest. That means iron 56 is the most stable nucleus. So we see here the fifth point that average binding energy for Fe 56 is highest. And what is value is equal to 8.8 .8 MeV per nuclear. Clear? Now, so what will happen if you go beyond 120? So, we have 6 for A greater than, for A line between 120 to 238, average binding energy decreases, average binding energy decreases gradually and is equal to 7.6 MeV per nuclear for uranium 238. So, if you move beyond mass number 120, then you can see that every binding is gradually decreasing and for uranium 238 it is how much? 7.6 MeV per nuclear. What happens if you come beyond this? So, for mass number more than 238, Aries binding energy is less than 7.6 MeV per nuclear. That means all the nuclei which are after the uranium, they are highly what? Unstable. And the reason is being that they are being crowded inside the nucleus and the effective distance becomes less than 
this distance. So, the forces are predominantly repulsive. What, what the nucleus has to do now? It has to throw out the extra matter from the nucleus. So, that the particles can come somewhere out here around the equilibrium distance and make the nucleus stable. This is why radioactivity takes place with the nuclei packed over very small region. The forces tend to be repulsive and the average binding energy is also very less in this case. Clear children? So, this is our average binding energy graph once again. I will sum it up. If the mass number is less than 40, then the average binding energy is less than 8.8 .8 million electron volt per nucleon. There are certain peaks, the graph is mostly smooth with some exceptions at helium, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, and also lithium, nitrogen, and oxygen 18. Out of the two isotopes of oxygen, 16 has got greater stability because greater average binding energy compared to oxygen 18. Clear? And then when the bind, uh, when mass number lies between eight, uh, 40 to 120, then average binding energy stays stable at around 8.5 MeV per nucleon. For iron 56 is highest and it is about 8.8 .8 MeV per nucleon. Now when the binding energy, uh, when the mass number increases beyond 120 and goes up to 238, then the average binding energy also starts decreasing. And uh, you can see it goes on gradually decreasing and for uranium 238 it is 7.6 MeV per nucleon showing that the stability is decreasing because the average binding energy is also decreasing. For uranium if you go for element beyond uranium 238 they will become highly unstable because the nuclei will have very low value of average binding energy. So, this is average binding energy graph. Okay? Okay.